Next, we will be looking at the third account or third part under this uh, balance of payment account. It is known as the Official Reserve Transactions Account. So what is this account about? It actually indicates the net amount of international reserves that shift among central banks to settle international transactions or between the countries and the International Monetary Fund. It also shows the net change in the government official reserves of like gold and foreign currency. So therefore, right, transactions under this account will use to offset the surplus in the other account. Alright, this part, it will be explained later. So therefore, as a whole, the balance of payment account always balances. Alright, let me explain this further by looking at uh, this example over here. So, over here, if there is a balance of payment deficit, it means that the outflow of our home currency to another, to other economies, uh, or rather out of our economy, is actually more than the inflow inflow of the foreign currency into our economy, it will be a downward pressure on our exchange rate. Why is this so? Because there is a actually more demand or there is an increase in demand for foreign currency while at the same time the supply of the home currency at the economy or rather out of our economy is actually uh, increases. So therefore, this will actually place a downward pressure on our exchange rate. So therefore, as such, right, the official financing account actually play a balancing role, it, whereby it will balance by running down on foreign currency reserve. What is meant by running down on foreign currency reserve? It means that right now, for this account itself, right, there are foreign currency reserve, and they will sell this reserve, this foreign currency, to the other economies in return for the home currency. So they will sell running down the foreign currency reserve means that you will sell the foreign currency reserve in return for the home currencies. Then because of this right, it will it is actually recorded as inflow of money because you sell for the home currency and therefore it is actually inflow of home currency into this account. So this is actually counted as inflow of money to balance the account. So on the other hand, if there is a surplus, meaning to say that the outflow of our home currency is actually less than the inflow of the uh, foreign currency, there is a surplus. Okay, due to this surplus, right, there will be an upward pressure on the exchange rate. Why is there an upward pressure on the exchange rate? This is because the demand for our the local currency or the demand for local currency is actually higher than the supply of local or rather you can call it home currency. Then that then therefore, in order to increase the supply of the home currency, the authority will actually buy the foreign currency reserve. The authority will actually buy the um foreign currency reserve by using our home currency so in this case right the uh, like let's say for example for, for example singapore will actually buy the foreign currency reserve by giving away singapore dollar in a way so therefore we buy foreign currency reserve by giving away singapore dollars to the economy or rather to other economies and hence therefore this actually increase this will actually increase the supply of the home currency in um out of the economy and that and hence this is these items are treated as an outflow of the money from our economy so next although the overall balance of payment must balance the individual sections as we mentioned over here it could be the current account capital and financial account it, it did, did not need to be balanced. It could be deficit or surplus. Since the final figures must be balanced, it shows that deficit in one section must be balanced by a surplus in another section. So let us look at one example. Let us look at, uh, uh, for example, if the sum of the car current and capital and financing account is negative, it means that the country is actually facing balance of payment deficit. So because of this, right, to finance this deficit, 
To finance this def deficit, the country will run down on the foreign currency, meaning to say that it will actually sell the foreign currency in return to have more home currency in the economy, and therefore is is into the economy and then it is considered as an inflow. On the other hand, another example over here, if the sum of the current and capital and finance financing account is actually positive, it means that the country is actually facing a balance of payment surplus. So it is a positive of 20 billion. So to offset this surplus, to offset this surplus, what the government will do is to buy the foreign currency. They buy the foreign currency by using home currency and therefore this home currency will out will go out of our economy and therefore it is actually a negative 20 million. Alright, let us do a simple recap. So in this case, uh, balance, of, uh, balance of payment account, if the sum of current account and capital and financial account shows a balance of payment deficit, it's actually financed by a four a decrease in the official reserve of the gold whereby they sell it off in return for the um, money or rather local, curr local currency, home currency into our economy back again. Therefore, it is actually considered as an inflow to the balance of payment. It is a, a, a counter or counter as a credit items. So therefore, the balance of payment account will balance. On the other hand, the opposite part is when there is a surplus in the current capital and financial account, it's actually balanced by an increase in foreign reserve, meaning to say that you actually increase or rather they, ex they buy the reserve using home currency and therefore it is actually an outflow of home currency from our economy and hence balance of payment accounts balances again. Alright, the balance of payments must always balance. Why is this so? Because it is actually an accounting statement, meaning to say that if import exceed the export, right, the current account, it will be a deficit. With this deficit, right, it means that the country is actually importing more than it exports. So therefore, such a deficit must be paid by the export of the money, meaning to say that you export the money out of the economy and hence, therefore, it is actually a capital and financial account surplus. So the relationship between the, finance, the current account and the capital account, assuming that there isn't any intervention by the central bank, um, the sum of the current account and the capital and financial account must be equal to zero. Meaning to say, if the current account is actually facing a deficit, it means that the capital and financial account should be a surplus. On the other hand, if the current account is having a surplus, the capital and financial account should be running a def or rather having a deficit. Do note that uh, saying that the balance of payment is in is in equilibrium doesn't mean that it is actually a balance of balance of payment. So a balance of payments can be in surplus or deficit or in equilibrium, but the balance of payment must always balance. Next, uh, shall we look at the next item, net error and omi uh, omissions. It is actually a balancing item because statistics, when they are compiled, right, there will be a number of errors, uh, or rather numbers of er errors are likely to occur. So therefore, as a result, due to this incomplete and inaccurate rec records, right, total credits and debits may not be equal may not be equal. So then, the balancing items represent the total errors and omissions which is required to bring the recorded BOP into balance. So it is actually to correct the statistical error. So if there is a plus sign, right, it shows that um, there are more foreign currency has been actually received or rather less payment have, to, have been made to other countries than the recorded items. On the other hand, if it is a negative sign, it means that less foreign currency has been received. And then it could also mean that uh, more payments made to the other countries than the recorded items. So therefore, this part, right, this section is actually look, is to look at the possible error to account for the uh, st statistical compilation of the um, items itself. So as my, I mentioned earlier on, when there is a balance, it doesn't mean that it is 
at the equilibrium. BOP always balance, but it doesn't mean that it is always in equilibrium. When a country enjoy a surplus, there are there must be a corresponding deficit somewhere in the world. I.e., it could be the trading partner is in a deficit. What does this mean? Let us look at okay. Before we look at that, right? Let us look at the BOP status of Singapore in year two thousand nine and two thousand ten. So over here, right, the goods balance, service balance, income balance, and con current transfer balance, it is actually under the current account. On the other hand, capital and financial account, it is actually running a deficit for two years, two thousand nine, two thousand ten. So net errors and omissions is actually due to the due to the statistical errors and therefore it's actually around 4.7 million it could be a lot from an individual point of view but as a whole economy this is actually um not very um not a lot as compared to the overall 50.8 million and 67.4 millions so the overall balance is actually 16.4 57.5 meaning to say that so this figures means that in year two thousand ten there are more um international trade transactions in uh year two thousand ten compared to year two thousand nine. All right, as I mentioned earlier on, when a country is facing a deficit, there must be another country or the trading partner will be facing a surplus. So let us look at this example. In the case of U.S., right, it's actually facing a trade deficit. Meaning to say that uh, what they sell abroad is actually less than what they imported from the other countries. So this deficit is actually fueled by the continuing needs for their foreign oil and imports of consumer goods and items from China and other countries. So the import is actually more than the export. Therefore, this explains the trade deficit. So on the other hand, if we were to look at the China, the context of the China, Context of China in response to the U.S. Uh, trade, meaning to say that U.S. actually um, imported items like petroleum products and items from China. In this way, and there is a growing share of the U.S. merchandise trade, trade deficit. It means that they are actually in um US is actually importing more and more products from the other part of the uh, from the other rest of the world. It could be petroleum products from those uh, oil oil producing countries, and it could be the consumer items from China made in China. On the other hand, we look at the context and in China itself. So over or uh, over the years, strike right, there is an increase in the export as you at. As the export over here it is represented by the green bar. So you realize that later part of the year or rather the export is actually significantly larger or larger than the import. So in China itself it is actually facing a trade surplus. To summarize, China itself is actually trade uh, facing a, a trade surplus. So next, uh, this is yes to summarize everything. To look at the um U.S. current account deficit actually mirrors the surplus in Asia's and the oil, uh, exporters. Because as I mentioned earlier on, uh, current account in a country when there is a current account deficit, right? It means that in the other country or the trading partners, there is a surplus in their current account. So over here, one of the like the uh significant trading partners in for US is actually Japan, Emerging Asia, and oil exporters. So because these are the major items that US import from the other countries, and Japan and Euro areas like the EU, uh, uh Euro area, right? These countries are the main trading partners with United States. Alright, to summarize today, we actually look at the structure of balance of payment account by looking at these three account, current account, capital and financial account, and official reserves and transactions account. This official uh, reserve and transaction accounts is actually play a balancing role by the government. So when the sum of the current account, capital and financial account is actually less than zero, there is a balance of payment deficit. When it's actually more than zero, it is actually a balance of set payment surplus. Both statuses, it means that the balance of payment is at this equilibrium. Let me repeat again. So when the sum of these two add up together is is less than whether it is less than what less than zero or more than zero is a sub deficit and a surplus. It means that the balance of payment is actually at this equilibrium. 
All right, for it to be at equilibrium is whereby uh, deficit in current account is equivalent to the surplus in capital and financial account. So it should be equals to zero. So that's it for today. The next lesson will go through the causes, uh, problems, and therefore what are how to correct balance of payment disequilibrium. Thank you.